Here we are, welcome to scenario number two, Crobate of Adventure Deck number two, the Skinsaw Murders of the Rise of the Rune Lords Adventure Path for Pathfinder card game. In Crobate, our locations are the farmhouse, the wooden bridge, the guard tower, woods, and the desecrated vault. The outskirts of Sandpoint have been overrun by the ravenous dead. Whether lurking amid fields or hiding in darkened cellars, hungry corpses wait to strike. Head into the night to find the horrors tormenting Sandpoint's farmers and return them to their graves. Our villain is Rogor's Crosby, or Crazby, Rogor's Crazby. We have a Scarecrow Golem and three Ghoul Scarecrow uh, henchmen. If you discard more than one card as damage from a combat check, bury one of those cards. We'll have to remember that if we take damage. Um, we've had the woods. I don't think we've had anything else. The Desecrated, Vols Desecrated Vault. If you would defeat a Bane with the Undead trait here, roll a 1d6. On a 1, the monster is undefeated. Wisdom or Divine 6 check to close. I think Kira is going to have to start there. On closing, each character this location may recharge an item from their discard pile. The farmhouse, if you would discard an ally, bury it instead. Summon and defeat a random monster to close. No effect when permanently closing. The guard tower, at the start of your turn, summon and encounter a bandit henchman. Oh yes, I remember this one from when we played our home game. Succeeded a strength 5 check to close. And on closing, you may banish a card from your hand to draw a random ally from the box. The Wooden Bridge, you may discard two cards to evade an encounter. Succeed at Dexterity or Stealth 6 check. And when you end your turn here, you may bury a card from your hand to recharge a card from your discard pile. So, I think with that being said, uh, we need to scroll up just a bit here. Amiri is going to head to the Guard Tower. Let us get a Bandit Henchman out since we're going to need him regularly. That little bugger there. Okay, we'll keep him just. Uh, we'll keep him right there because we know we're going to need it regularly. Uh, Kira is going to head to the desecrated vault, and I think Sioni. Um, let's put Sioni at the farmhouse. I suppose we'll shuffle up their decks. Amiri took the card feet or the, the hand size power, so. War Razor, Long Sword, Magic Shield, a Matic, and Blessing of the Gods. She does get an extra card in her starting hand now. Uh, Kira, still at five as well. It's going to start with a Mace, a Blessing of the Gods, another, her Elven Breastplate, and a third Blessing of the Gods. Make sure that we're. Alright. And. Sioni. Move this group. There we go. An acolyte. This is going to be kind of difficult to see. There we go. We can kind of move that a little bit there. Force missile. Now she gets six still. Blessing of the gods. Another. Lightning touch. And one more. A third blessing of the gods. We got some good starting hands. Good starting hands. So, uh, we begin, as always, with Amiri. So, here we go. Crowbait. Let us begin. A Warhammer. Very nice. Strength melee plus 1d8. You can additionally discard for another 1d6. Not bad. Not bad. It is a strength melee 6. So let's do a D12 plus 3. Let's get a Warhammer, folks. Let's roll it in the box, folks. 9. That will get us a Warhammer. Very nice. Very nice, very nice, very nice. Uh, what do we have? How many blessings? We've got 5 blessings. Oh, at the start of your turn. Geez, look at that. I've already forgotten. Okay, so this is a Combat 8. Uh, let's use... Um, Let's use our long sword, which is a D12 plus three 
plus a d8. And we need combat 8. Before the encounter, recharge a card of your choice from your hand. Let's get rid of... Well, let's just do our Matic. Whoops, that is not what I wanted to do. All right, we are recharged. Okay. We need a combat eight, and this is at a plus three here. Four, seven, plus three is ten. That'll do it. Okay, so we do defeat the bandit. We got the war hammer. Turns over. Um, let's go ahead and use our blessing and search again. Ghoul Scarecrow, not bad. All right, we could get an early close on this. That would be fantastic. If undefeated, reset and end your turn. Reset your hand and end your turn. Uh, okay. Oh, the undead here is the, the desecrated vault. Immune to mental and poison. So I'm kind of glad that we kept the War Razor because what we can actually do now, so our War Hammer is actually the same as our Long Sword. It's just this is slashing. This one's bludgeoning. So... Um, we're going to use our longsword for d12 plus 8 plus 3. And then our war razor, because it's a finesse weapon, actually allows us to play it with another weapon. So we're going to discard it for another d4 plus 1. So we got plus 4 there. So we're going to discard the war razor. And we need, this is a combat 11. We got it. 6 and 4, that's a 10 right there. 3 plus... That's 13, 17. We didn't even need the, the extra 5 that we got. Because that would have been 9, 12. Boy, we would have barely got it. But we would have got it nonetheless. But, better safe than sorry, right? Okay. So, now, uh, succeed at a strength 5 check. So our strength is only a d12 plus 1. We don't get the melee plus 2. So, let's see here. One. A big fat one. Well done. Oh, that means we have to go through these eight cards to close. That is going to suck. There are a lot of boons here, but that sucks. That's going to be the end of Amiri's turn. She's going to draw the Grizzled Mercenary and a Codex. Kira. Um, okay. A goblin raid. Everybody gets a goblin henchman. A goblin raider henchman. It's like Oprah. You get a goblin raider henchman. And you get a goblin raider henchman. Everyone gets a goblin raider henchman. So I like to pull out enough just so that we know who's who's uh, attacked their goblin raider and who has not. So if undefeated, bury an item or weapon of your choice from your discard pile. So... Combat 8, that's going to be D12 plus D8 plus 3. That'll do it. Amiri's Goblin is dead. Okay. Um, Kira has a mace. It's a D6 plus D8 plus 2 for her. Yeah, yes, indeed. 4 plus 2 is 6. That's not going to do it. Uh, bury an item or weapon of your choice from your discard pile. We don't have anything in our discard pile. We take two damage, but with our Elven Breastplate, reveal this card to reduce combat damage dealt to you by two. Boom. All we have to do is reveal it. We don't take the damage. And see, well, that was under C only, but that was Kira's. I said Kira. I was rolling for Kira. Now we're going to banish this card here. And uh, let's see here. Let's do, let's actually, hmm. Oh, man. All right, we're going to do a force missile. So D12 plus 3 plus 2 D4. Got it. That was a 10 before I... Flipped it over, and 4 is 14, plus another 3. That goblin is dead. Alrighty, so we dealt with the goblin henchman raid. Uh, Kira's going to search again. 
Ooh, a holy candle. This is great. This actually gets us turns back from the Blessings deck. Bury this card. Shuffle 1d6 random cards from the Blessings discard pile into the deck. Wisdom or Divine 10. Uh, D12 plus 3 on a Divine check. Uh, that's to recharge a card. Sioni's uh, going to play a Blessing. So we're going to get 2d12 plus 3. We would like to have this. Ooh, I got worried at that one, but that 11 saved us. Alrighty. So we're going to pick up a Holy Candle. Very, very nice card to go into our deck. She's going to end her turn. Uh, she's at max hand size, so no need to reset. And Sioni. Blessing of the Mash 2 shows up. What do we got here? If you were discard an ally. Speaking of allies, Charisma Diplomacy 6. D12 plus 3. That'll do it. Four plus three. It's a seven. We're going to pick up a standard bearer. And we're going to go ahead and just discard the standard bearer to explore again. Blast stone. Intelligence craft four. A d6. Not going to do it. Not quite. That's okay. Our items go there. And let's go ahead and call that the end of her turn. And we pick up old Poogie. Amiri gets to sort through here. Magic leather armor. Confort 2. Got it. Not bad. Reduce combat damage dealt by 1. I don't really think that we need that. It's good. It's better than regular leather armor, but I think Amiri's got a little bit better. So, um, <sighs> Excuse me. Okay. Uh, we're going to reset our hand and end our turn. We have to discard. We're just going to get rid of the magic leather armor. It's nice. I mean, banish this card, reduce all damage dealt to you by zero. If you're proficient with light armors, bury it instead. And then if you're proficient with light armors, you may recharge this card when you reset your hand. So, very nice, but it's the same thing here as the Elven Breastplate. Um, and I think Amiri has better armor than that. I think she... I don't know. We'll have to see. Um... Blessing of Ayamide. This is Kira's turn now. She's going to get a Spyglass. Wisdom Perception 4. To D12 plus 3. That'll do it. It helps with Perception checks. Not terrible. Or discard to examine the top two cards of your location deck and put them in back in any order. Let's go ahead and do exactly that. Top two. Okay. That's going to be a Goblin Commando and a Toxic Cloud. This is actually really good. It's an arcane spell. This would be great for Sioni. Unfortunately, it's not going to be easy for us to get. So, what we're going to do, let's put the Goblin Commando back uh, before he deals one range count to you. And we're going to put the Toxic Cloud back. We're going to end Kira's turn. Sioni is going to start her turn and move here and try to get a Toxic Cloud. Arcane 8. It's a d12 plus 3. So, display this card when a character encounters a Bane. Any character who encounters a monster this turn adds 1d6 with Poison Trait to her combat check. Discard this card at the end of the turn. Arcane 10 check to recharge it. This is nice because it gives, it's a, a range damage spell. That allows, it allows Sioni to assist on, um, on combats from anywhere. So, uh, we're going to play a Blessing. I would really like to have this. So 2d12 plus 3. Little Rant actually just picked this up in our home game on Ezrin. He plays uh, Ezrin the Wizard. That'll do it. Ooh, baby, 10 and a 12. All right, Toxic Cloud indeed. All righty. So that will be the end of Sioni's turn. Amiri. Gonna pick up an archer. Dex range eight, charisma diplomacy six. We can do it with a charisma. Not quite though. That would have been nice to have just because it would have given us an extra exploration. And because we failed on the strength check to close, we've got to explore the entire deck here in order to close the location. So anything that gives us an exploration would be very nice. But 
end of the turn. Now it's Kira's turn. We're actually going to move. Well, it doesn't really matter. See, use Amiri's power to move Sioni back there, but she can move there on her turn anyways. All right, so that's Kira's turn. The Goblin Commando. We're going to use the mace. So before, Count of the Goblin does one range combat damage to you. My Elven Breastplate takes that. Boom. Uh, strength melee is so a d6 plus d8. Plus two. We had trouble with the last goblin, but I think we can get this one. Even though he's a little bit tougher, actually. Got him! Just gotta be positive. That's nine plus two. That little goblin's dead. Alrighty. Uh, let's explore. No, let's not explore again. Not for Kira. She's not quite as strong. Um, Alright. So she's going to end her turn. Well, if Sione's going to move, yeah, we will explore again. See, look at that. I need to listen to my instincts. But it is an undead ghoul, so Kira does get the bonus. So again, we're going to have d6 plus d8 plus 2. Okay. And because of Kira's power, she's going to add 1d8 plus 1 with the magic trait to her check to defeat undead. So she's going to pick up another... 1d8. Here we go. So 2d8 plus 6 plus d6 plus 3. Okay, and that's going to do it. It's immune to mental and poison, but we're using a mace magic trait. That's 11, 13, and 3 is 16. Already. Um, so that's going to kill the scarecrow. Let's see if Kira can, I, can close this location. Uh, D12 plus 3, divine 6. Is that on 10? I think so. Let's check it again just to make sure, but we're going to take the 10. Yeah. Okay. We got it. We said we are going to take 10, but... Uh, oh! If you defeat a Bane with the undead trait here, roll a 1d6. On a 1, the monster is undefeated. 5. Monster is still defeated. Excellent. Each character's location may recharge an item from their discard pile. So it's a good thing I decided not to move Sioni. That's going to close. Uh, search what we got here. Uh, let's go ahead and recharge that. Oops. Stop it! Jeez. Okay. And what do we got here? Uh, blessings, Santa Bear. Okay, blessings. So. They each got a blessing back. It's going to be the end of her turn. Recharge. We get aid or reset. Sione is going to start her turn and move to the farmhouse. And we're going to find a longbow there. Dex ranged five. One's not going to get it. Okay. Uh, let's see here. We just got the blessing back, so let's use the blessing to explore again. And we find the villain. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. He is immune to mental and poison. Before the encounter, succeed at a con or fort eight check, or the difficulty of all checks is increased by one for the rest of your turn. If undefeated, reset your hand and end your turn. So, con or fort 8. That fails. So, difficulty is reset, is increased by 1. Sione is going to attempt to temporarily close this location with the d12 plus 1 check. Not going to do it still. So, Sione, what do we got? Combat 12, then combat or divine 15. Alright, so... We are, uh... 
I don't know if we can play the Toxic Cloud with another spell. I don't think we can. So let's use, um, what is it? Oh, Mental and Poison. He's immune to poison anyways. So let's use our Force Missile. D12 plus 3 plus 2D4. Okay, and this is for a combat 12. We're going to recharge Poog to add three more with fire. Five, nine, ten, and six is sixteen. Okay, so that's the first one. So now we need a combat fifteen. Uh, this recharges automatically. And now we're going to do a lightning touch. Um, So that is, uh, again, D12, 2D4, plus 3. This time we're going to recharge our Acolyte to add 1D4 to our check. And uh, let's have Kira play a Blessing to get us another D12. So it's obviously it's not going to end the game, but we can close location. That'll do it. 14, 16, 23, 6. 26. So, Rogor's Crosby is defeated, but unfortunately he's going to escape. And he has got three locations to go to. So, this location closes automatically. We do not need to fulfill the closing requirement, which is nice because it was the villain. He's got three locations to escape to, because we could not close or temporarily close this one. But the nice thing is, since he was defeated, we take two blessings out of the box and not out of the blessings deck. Let's shuffle these up. That's enough shuffling. We're going to deal one to each open location. And we're going to shuffle up these open locations. And I did not uh, get rid of the location deck um, from the Desecrated Vault. And the farmhouse as well. So, Blessing of Toreg would have been nice. Plague Zombie would not have been. And a Scout. And a Goblin War Chanter. Wow! Three of the four monsters right there. Mercenary, we've had problems with him before. That bastard. Wand of Shield. Monster in the Closet Barrier, the Enchanter, do not like her. Some Bracers of Protection and a Traitor. Alrighty, so we're going to uh, recharge Lightning Touch. That is the end of Sione's turn. Let's reset her hand. The Mercenary, Blessing of the Gods, Mirror Image, Blessing of the Gods, and a Sahedron Medallion. Excellent. Amiri. Let's keep on going. Oh my gosh, look who we found, folks. Connor Fort 8. Nope. Unfortunately, we can't temporarily close anywhere. So, he is a combat 13. And then a 16. This is going to be tough, but not completely tough. Okay, so let's play it like so. Um, okay, D12 plus 3 plus a D8. We're going to bury our Grizzled Mercenary for another D8. Thirteen. That'll do it. Eleven, nineteen, twenty-one, 
24. Okay, and we need a 16 now. We're going to use our long sword again. D12 plus the 3 plus D8. This time, for the first time, we're going to use our card power, or Amiri's power. Bury a card from your hand to add 1d10 to your strength, melee, or con check. Let's go ahead and just bury the codex. And we're going to add a d10. That's a 9, which is a good thing, because that's a 1. 10, 14, 15, 16, 17. That will do it. So that's going to defeat Mr. Crazeby again. Very, very well done. So that will close this location. He has two locations to escape to, so we're going to pull the blessing. Do not need a defeat. That's the end of our bandit as well. Let's see what we got here. A skeleton horde. A plus one longbow. That would have been very nice for Amiri. Crowbar. A soldier. A werewolf. And a potion of hiding. Let's shuffle these up. Spread them out, and we'll shuffle these. And that's the end of the turn. Kira! I think we're going to send Kira to the place with a little bit fewer monsters. She's not the strongest. Um, when you end your turn here, you may bury a card from your hand to recharge a card from your discard pile. Okay. So, Kira is going to search or explore. Aldern Foxglove. Charisma Diplomacy 4. Let's try it. Well, it was a 4, but let's try and get it in the box. And it's still a 4. Maybe it's weighted. So, Aldern lets us banish this card to reduce damage dealt to a character at your location by 3, or banish to succeed at your check to acquire weapon, armor, item, or spell. So he's one of those one-time use allies, because you have to banish him regardless. It's okay. Uh, that's going to be the end of Kira's turn. Sioni. Let's send Sioni over here. A plus one dagger. Dex range, six. Two. It's okay. It's not a great dagger, again, because just we don't have any dex fighters. And... Um, Sione can't use weapons anyways, uh, but she can explore again with a blessing, and she can find the Scarecrow. You may not place spells with the attack trait. Um, boy, that kind of screws her, because that's all that she has. If defeated, you may immediately attempt to close this location. Yeah, that one has the attack trait. And her power has fire, attack, and magic. So, she's going to have to fist fight this big scarecrow golem. So, that's going to be a d4. Uh, Hey, Arch. So what's going on here? Uh, sorry, I didn't not even see your message there. Um, yeah, this is Pathfinder card game. You've watched our Pathfinder stream before, our Pathfinder RPG game before. Um, this is the Pathfinder card game. Uh, uh, give me a few minutes. We're, we're almost done, actually. We're doing quite well, and uh, I'll give you a run through. So... Um, Right now, though, the problem is our spellcaster has to fight this construct, this golem, without her spells. So she's going in fists ablazing. So, D4. 
We are going to play the Grizzled Mercenary. We're going to bury him for a D8. Um, which means we need to roll perfectly to defeat this. But not quite. She's going to play a Blessing. Because she can do that. So we get the D8. We get another D4. So we have two D4s and a D8. We need a 12. This is difficult. But it can be done. She does have Mirror Image and her Sahedrin Medallion to block the damage. So that's okay. But... Let's see what we get. That's not going to do it. Two, two, and a three. That's a seven. That's a ways away from a 12. Okay. So she's going to take five points of damage, but we're going to play our mirror image. If a monster deals damage to you, display this card, even if you've played another spell. Roll a 1d4. On a result other than one, reduce the damage to zero. That's a two. We take zero damage. That is a fantastic spell for an arcane spellcaster who can't use armor. And it's going to automatically recharge. So, our golem goes back in the deck because we did not defeat him. we got to shuffle it up. Uh, undefeated monsters other than villains or henchmen are banished. Bummer. Wait a minute. That's a wisdom or survival six check. Who's got the best wisdom? Oh, that's going to be Kira. Yeah, Kira is a d12 in wisdom. I don't know if anyone has survival. Eh, d6 plus three. So, we should actually send Sioni over here, because Kira has Wisdom and Amiri has, has Survival, so they should come here. So, that's going to be the end of Sioni's turn. We're going to reset our hand. Wow, we've already gone through our deck. Okay. And it is Amiri's turn. Flip the blessings. All right, Amiri's going to come over here. Search. And we get an Amulet of Mighty Fists. It's okay, but the problem is you can't play a spell with the attack trait or a weapon. So, when do you use this? You can't play it with spells, attack spells, and you can't play it with weapons. So, I don't think it's that great. Intelligence, Arcane, Wisdom, Divine. Um, intelligence for Wisdom is D6. All right. So, D6, we need a 4. We got it. We got this crappy item. Maybe if someone in, uh, who watches this on YouTube can tell me, when would that be useful? I mean, is this better? Like, what kind of character is this good for? I don't know who could use this. Because when you play this card, you can't play attack spells and you can't play weapons. Okay, well, attack spell, that's all she has. Her power, attack spell, weapon, weapon. I mean, when do you use this? Let me know in the comments. Uh, so she's going to end her turn there, reset her hand, gets her Bastard Sword, very nice. Kira is up. Kira's going to join the party in the woods. Okay, and what do we get? We get, oh shit, we've got a collapsed ceiling. Alright, so the difficulty is increased by two, because it's Adventure Deck 2. And it says it there, we've had this so many times. Dex, Acrobatics, Con, Fort, 8. Um, her Fort is a D6 plus 3. We need a Blessing. Let's play the Blessing of Ayamide. Because this is going to be a big problem if we can't get rid of this right now. So it's going to be 2D6 plus 3. And we need, we actually need a 10. Uh, do we have anything else that can help us out here? Um, no, she can't play the Thieves' Tools. Not yet. Um, discard this card to add 1d6 to a check. Excellent. We're going to play the Aid spell. Aid, not Aids. Uh, succeed at a Divine 8 check. So let's try to recharge that real quick. 4 plus 3 is a 7. That's not going to recharge, so that does get discarded, unfortunately. All right. Now let's make this check. We need a 10, and we're at a D6 plus 3. 3, 6, 7, plus that ever important 3 is a 10. Whew. We defeated the collapsed ceiling. That would have been bad because it stays here if it's undefeated. And each character has to encounter the Collapse Ceiling on their first expiration and cannot move away. Which is bad because we've got all three characters here. That could have been very, very bad. But, 
Kira gets it. She's going to finish her turn, reset her hand, and be done. Sione's turn. She's going to move over to the wooden bridge. I'm going to move them up here. <laughs> yay! Indeed, indeed, yay. That could have been very, very bad. All right. Burglar. This is an ally, Charisma Diplomacy 6. We're great at Charisma. D12 plus 3. That'll do it. 11. So we're going to take the Burglar. Recharge to add to your Stealth check or Disable check or check to defeat a barrier. If you do not acquire this card, discard a weapon or an item. Well, we got him, so it's okay. Unfortunately, we cannot discard him to explore, which kind of sucks. Um, nor can we with our Acolyte. So our turn is actually over. So, um, I have it. That's disable. I want to see that. Yeah, that's not disable. So, we couldn't have used that, anyways. We're going to use our thieves' tools on a collapse. No. All right. End of return. Amiri. Crowbar. Strength three. This is a d12 plus a three. We automatically get it. Minimum roll we get is a uh, four. So, we're going to acquire that. There's nothing we can do. We're going to get rid of the amulet for right now. Because we can't explore again. Um, okay. Kira. Just so happens she gets Blessing of Saren Ray. Here we go. Zombie Giant. Immune to mental and poison. If undefeated after the encounter, discard the top card of your deck. So it's a combat 13. It is undead. So Kira's going to get the bonus against undead. Uh, let's use, let's use the mace. I mean, they're both strength. The mace is going to be a little bit better. Um, can I type in chat? Okay. Um, so, D6 plus a D8 plus 2, I believe. For the melee, yes, plus two. Okay. It is undead, so we get another D8 plus one. D8. Okay. And this is a combat 13, I believe. Yeah, it's a nasty giant. But we got him. 7, 13, 13, 16, 17, 18, 19. And then, and then, 19. That's going to do it. So the zombie giant is dead. Kira cannot explore again. It's the end of her turn. Bah, not quite. Let's actually use the holy candle. Just because. So we're going to bury that. 1d6. We got a 5. So we're going to get 5 turns back. 5 random blessings. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, uh, let's see here. Yeah, give me a little bit. Uh, get, um, give me a few minutes, Evil. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. So we're going to reset our turn. Blessing of Gorum. Wait a minute, where did I just draw that from? Did I draw that from the right deck? I don't think I did. Nope, I didn't. That does not come into here. Let me draw from this deck. Whew. It's a good thing I caught that on stream. Okay. Now it is Sione's turn. Sione's going to... Well, she's going to take her turn. Blessing of Desna. Intelligence, Arcane, Divine, 5. Normally this would be a good card because it can add two dice to a recharge a card. But Sione recharges her cards for free. So, it'd be good for, for Kira. Arcane, 5. D12 plus 3. 5. I mean, the only way we don't get that is by rolling a 1. So, uh, let's go ahead and discard that to explore again, though. Blessing of Torag. Holy blessings. So, I... Oh, no, there's already one blessing here. I was going to say, I don't think the, the villain is here then, but... There was one blessing plus the two extra, so there could still be one more blessing. The villain could still be here. 
Strength four or divine five? Well, I guess the strength. I'd like to have a blessing of Toreg, but this is going to be difficult to get. D4. Two. Not going to get it. So, oh, it's non-combat strength. Actually, Gorm is better up here. The blessing of Gorm is better than blessing of Toreg. Not that that's bad, but I would rather have Gorm over Toreg. So, because Gorm will add to a, a combat check, a combat strength check, like for Amiri. Um, Toreg is non-combat strength. So, when you have when you have melee fighters like Amiri, combat strength like Gorm is probably better. I don't know all of Amiri's backstory, um, but she's the type of character that would worship Gorm. Uh, my barbarian worships Gorm that I that I play in Pathfinder Society. So, okay. It's going to be the end of that turn. Amiri, speaking of, is up. Pit trap. What is with the freaking pit traps we get all the time? Wisdom, D6. No. Dex. Oh, my gosh. We don't have a blessing to play. Amiri's going to fall in the pit trap. Mm. <laughs> Very nice, Sarge. Uh, non-combat strength, or check to defeat a barrier with lock or obstacle. Is this lock or obstacle? Nope, it's a trap. Damn it! Um, we don't have any blessings. There's nothing we can do, because it's a wisdom perception 7, and our wisdom is a d6, or a dex acrobatics 8, and our wisdom, and our, our dex is a d6. So we can't get it. There's nothing that we can do, and unfortunately, undefeated, each character this location is dealt 1d4 combat damage, which means Kira and Amiria both are going to take, well, let's roll it in the right spot, 4 damage, holy crap, max damage, and it does go back in the deck, because it does not say banish the card of undefeated. We're going to shuffle that back in, so, 4 damage, um, so we've got the magic shield, because it is combat damage, so we're, apparently we're landing on our shield. Um, reveal this card to reduce combat damage dealt to you by two. Uh, if you push the armor, you play another armor. Okay, so we're going to re reveal that, reduce it, so we take two combat damage. If you discard more than one card as damage from a combat check, bury one of those. So we're going to discard the Warhammer, and we're going to bury the Crowbar. Okay. Kira also takes four damage. Um, she is going to play Reveal the Breastplate to reduce combat damage by two. And then she's going to discard the Amulet of Life to reduce damage dealt to you by three. Succeeded in Arcane 7 to recharge. Great item. So she's going to be able to prevent all of the damage, but we do have to play the Amulet. A 12 is going to recharge that. There we go. That's the end of Amiri's turn. Reset the hand. Whew. What am I doing? It's twice I've done that. Mash to Sheriff Hemlock. That was a that was a rough trap. That was a really rough trap. All right, Kira's turn. Blessing of Desna. Oh, and we pull a blessing of Phrasma. D12 plus three. It's an arcane or divine five. That's cocked. That's not. That's going to do it. 8 plus 3. Discard this card to add 2 dice to a check if a spell was played. That's a good blessing for Sioni to keep. So we can give that to her at the end of the turn. At the end of the, the game. So. Um, that's going to be the end of Kira's turn. Boy, these last two uh, locations are proving tough. Sioni. See, there's bless. That's Tori. We already did that. All right. Chainmail. Well, she can't wear armor. It's a con or fort three. Her con's a d6. One is not going to get it anyways, but that's okay. I mean, we've all got better armor than that. Those of us that can wear armor. Our armor is okay. Our armor situation's okay. Um, we can't explore again. It's the end of her turn, I guess. Amiri. Are you freaking kidding me? At least we have the blessings we can play this time. Um, we're just going to play this one. 
Discard this card to add one die to a check. So now, yeah, I mean, there was only six cards left here. So, uh, Wisdom, D6, Dex, D6. All right, so we're going to make this a Wisdom check because we did play this, so we got 2D6. And we need a 7. We need this. Slightly less than 50%. But again, with Amiri and Kira, they both have the armor to be able to withstand it, which is good, but still. If I defeat it, we can get it out of the damn deck. Oh, man, a 6 and a 1. Exactly a 7. Boom. Whew. Okay. We got it that time. Let's reset our hand and end our turn. Kira. Kira gets a Spectre. It's undead, though. Immunomental Poison. If the check does not have magic, the Spectre is undefeated. If undefeated, you move to a random location. Combat 11 or Wisdom Divine 7. Oh, easy. We're going to make the Divine check, actually, which is D12 plus 3. So it is undead as well. So she gets her bonus D8 plus 1 against undead. D12 plus D8 plus 4. Um, all right. The only way we lose this if we, is if we roll 1-1. One, one. Oh my god, I got worried when I saw that first one. This one landed first, and I saw the one. I was like, oh my god, no, don't do it. Oh, man. After that last scenario, 8 plus 4 is 12. That did worry me a little bit. I think I just tilted it. Yeah. Okay. Um... He is defeated. Kira is going to end her turn. Sioni. How's our dex looking? Oh, we're fine. We still got 12 turns left. Ah, we're good. Goblin Snake. This is Tendency's favorite. Combat 8. Before the encounter, succeeded a con or fort 6 check. The difficulty is increased by 1. Yeah, we can make this. We're not going to, though. So, increased by one. So this is a combat nine. Um, let's use our toxic cloud. Okay, which will add one d6 with poison. And then we're gonna discard our thieves tools to use our spontaneous spellcasting power for arcane, so d12 plus three plus d6. So Arcane is D12 plus 3 plus a D6 plus 1. And then the Toxic Cloud is also a D6. Holy crap. 4, 5, 6 plus 4 is 10. God, we barely beat that. With a Fire Spell and Poison, and we still barely beat it. Uh, okay. Toxic automatically recharges because we're Sioni and she's awesome like that. And we're going to reset our hand. Yeah, boy, that one was Poog. Poog. Poog of Zarin Gel, my little goblin cleric. Uh, next up is going to be Amiri. Where is the damn villain? He's, he could still be here because of where he escaped. He could still be here, but Scarecrow gone. All right, this is good. Because you can't play spells, which was Sioni's problem. But we can play our big-ass sword. So, D12 plus 3 plus a D10. Um, and we're going to discard Sheriff Hemlock to add another 1D6. And so we got D12, D10, D6 plus 3, and we need a 12. That's, whoops, 5, 10, a 1 on our D12. So 11, 12, 13, 14. Again, with the barely. Okay. Defeated. Attempt to close. Succeeded a Wisdom or Survival 6 check. Uh, oh, we can do Survival. Yes. Uh, D6 plus 3. Let's play the Blessing to get 2D6 plus 3. 
And we need survival six. Yes. There it is. Five plus six plus three. Boom. This location closes. Maybe. If the villain is not here. He is here. So that goes. Ooh, a carry-on storm. And a goblin cut purse. We had two monsters and the villain left. So the, this location doesn't close because the villain's there. But now we know the villain is there. So, yes. It's a BF sword. <laughs> All right, we're going to end our turn. Oh, I do only have leather armor, so that magic leather armor that I picked up earlier will be better. I didn't think, I thought I had better than that already. Okay, cool. Um, Kira's turn. Wait, is, is he undead? I think he is undead. The second check can be divine. I'm wondering if Kira wants to fight him. It's a ghast, and I'm pretty sure ghasts are undead. Yeah, Kira's going to go for it. Because she could have ex moved over to here and explored this location. So, TJ Pedal is back. Welcome. So, uh, dex or stealth six check to see if we can close this temporarily. Oh, look at that. We have a burglar to add 1d10 to our stealth check. So... But can we make a stealth check? Because we don't have the stealth skill. Stealth or disable check. I don't think that we can make a stealth check because we don't have the stealth skill. And the burglar does not give us the stealth skill. So, dex 8. It's a dex check. Dex 6. Um, I'm going to play a blessing. We are playing Pathfinder card game. Uh, so we're going to get two D8. I mean, I can make it. I can make a six on a D8, but it's tough. Making a six on two D8s is a lot easier. And we do it. See, neither of them were a six, but together we got a nine. So this is going to temporarily close, which means if we defeat the villain here, we win the game. And he is, he is undead, combat 12, and then combat or divine, divine 15. So, no, it's fine, evil. We're almost done. Um, he's immune to mental and poison. Succeeded a con or fort 8 check. So, D6 plus 3. Otherwise, his difficulty goes up by 1. Boom! 5 plus 3, that's 8. That's going to make it. Okay. So, combat 12. So, here's the nice thing about this, okay? And, again, we've, we've had these before. He requires two checks to defeat. Um, you can kind of see it. It's combat 12, then combat fi or divine 15. Now, some of them will say combat 12 or, you know, divine 15, whatever. Because it requires two checks, anyone at the location can make those checks, but the person whose turn it is, in this turn, Kira, has to make at least one. Meaning, we can take our BF sword on Amiri and make one of those checks. So, I think what we want to do, I'm trying to decide uh, decide which sword, okay, Kira's going to actually make the easier of the two checks, so she's, it's not the divine, like, she can make the divine 15, but we're going to have her make the combat 12, okay, so we're going to play our mace, which is melee, so it's d6 plus 2, this, we're going to wreck this, we're going to end this game right here, okay, D12 plus 2 plus a D8. We're going to discard this for another D4. So we're going to get rid of that for a D4. Remember, it's undead, so we get an extra D8 plus 1. I could play a Blessing as well for another D6. Um, sure, why the heck not? Uh, so we're gonna play a we're gonna play the blessing of Phrasma to add one more die to the check, and it's gonna be yeah, another d6. So it's our blue d6. So two d8 plus two d6 plus d4 plus three, and we need a twelve. So this was the last one that we added one, so that clearly helps. Seven, ten, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. So that's the first check. Okay, so that defeats the 12. Like I said, she only has to make one. It doesn't have to be the second, it's anyone. 
Amiri's going to make the Combat 15. She's going to play her Bastard Sword, or the BF Sword for the League of Legends players. Strength, or well, Melee, which is D12, plus 3, plus a D10. She's also going to discard this for another D10. Uh, another D10 here. Okay. And she's going to invoke her power to bury a card from our hand to add another D10 to the check. So let's bury the leather armor. And because why not, let's play a Blessing of Calistria for another D12. We're going to wreck this guy. So one of the D10s is the D100. So you can see it says 80, 20, you know, so unfortunately we don't get that much. We divide it by 10. So 8, 2, 6, whatever. In the event that we roll the double zero, that is a 10 on it. So, so we have got 2D12 plus 3D10 plus 3. We need a 15. I think we got it. It's possible to miss. It's still possible. But we're not gonna. 6, 9, 15, 17. Oh, that max roll. 12, 17. That's 29, 30, 31, 32. We killed him twice over. This guy's dead. And that's the game. Because we did temporarily close this location. He has nowhere to escape to. He's dead. Boom. Okay. Awesome. 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 So, let's take care of the rest of the decks here real quick. Uh, allies. That was a guard. A bunyip. Blessing of Lamash too. Those are nice to pick up. Skeleton horde. The Boy, another one. We had two skeleton hordes. There's a skeleton. And the last ghoul, Scarecrow, Henchman. All right. So we would have been okay without using the Holy Candle, but it's always nice. I mean, you have it. You only have to bury it. So you don't have to get rid of the card. But we would have had four turns left. That's okay. Each character draws a random armor from the box as a reward. Armor. Armor. Where's our armor? Here it is. Okay. Which sucks because Sioni can't use armor anyways. Redneck Monkey, what's up? So, but we do draw three, and so we can exchange them if we want. So, if, you know, we get, basically, I just take three, and I put them out there. Um, elven chain shirt, I don't, that's not, that's not better than an elven breastplate. So, we're just going to get rid of that one. Magic leather armor, which I think we had one up here anyways. I think we did acquire that magic leather armor. Yeah. Remember, because I was talking about how bad it was and then I for us, and then I found out that I actually only had leather armor, so it turns out it's very good. But we also have a – so I'm going to get rid of that because we already have one. We also have a Deathbane shield. Let's see how it is compared to our magic shield. If you played a weapon with two-handed, you can't use it. Reveal this card to add the magic trait to your combat check. Reveal this card to reduce combat damage dealt to you by two. If you're proficient with light armors, you may play another armor. Reveal to reduce combat damage dealt by two. If you're proficient, you can play another. Um, you may recharge this card when you reset your hand. There's no reason to reset it because you only reveal it. Um, so they're both the same. Reveal to reduce combat damage by two. If you're proficient with light armors, you can play another armor. They both say that. Proficient with light armors, you can play another armor. You can't play it if you played a two-handed weapon. I think the Deathbane Shield is better because we can just reveal that card and it adds the magic trait to our combat check because of things like Spectres or, um, oh, what else? Shadows. Things like that, that if your check does not have the magic trait, then this this is undefeated. We actually ran into that with Amiri um, a couple scenarios ago. So the Deathbane Shield is actually um, an upgrade because all we have to do is reveal that, and boom, now our attack is magic. Even though we're attacking with a sword, it's con it has you know magical qualities. So we'll keep the shield because maybe Kira? I mean, because it's only considered... Um, a light armor. 
and you don't have to be proficient with shields. So, awesome. Um, that Deathbane Shield was a really good reward. So, that is going to be the end of this scenario. So, and that will be the end of this video. So, for those watching on YouTube, you can click the link that is right there. And jump immediately next to... Ne it jump immediately to the next video, which is scenario three, which is foul misgivings. This is a fun one because the victim, it's not your typical victim. For those who haven't played it, it's not your typical victim, the way it works a little bit. If you remember scenario two in deck one, the, the not the vi victim, but the villain. Um, in scenario two of deck one, the, the, the villain was allies one random ally per per deck and if you acquire an ally you can attempt to close the location this is kind of along those lines but it's a little bit different scenario three has a really cool villain mechanic so make sure you check that out and we will see you next time thanks for watching